Welcome everyone and thank you again for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the webinar, How to Detect Ransomware Using Alien Vault USM. We even have a live um, demo for you today by Aziz. And um, here is our Alien Vault product manager, Vikram. He will give a short introduction before handing over to Kian from Alien Vault for the main event. All right, uh, thank you, Jessica, for that. So hello, everyone, and thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us today. Um, my name is Vikram, and I handle Alien Vault and Ingram Micro for the Meta region. So before we go on to the main topics, I'm just gonna quickly give you an update um, of what we're doing right now in terms of activities and what's coming soon. Um, firstly, I just want to talk to you about our Ingram Micro Cyberbyte, which is our new cybersecurity newsletter. Um, this is a monthly issue, and we're going to have a lot of news on there related to cybersecurity, as well as if we onboard any new vendors. And also, we always put some um, exciting topics on there, so please do keep uh, an eye out for this. And uh, check, please check your junk mail. And if you find it there, please whitelist the sender. Thank you. Um, secondly, I'm going to talk to you about our online services. So firstly, we have our website, which is security.ingrammicro.com. Now here you'll be able to see all the documents that we have uh, created in terms of white papers. You have the links to our webinars. And uh, you also are able to book sessions with our consultants um, in, in case you require any services. So please do uh, uh, go to the website. Again, it's security.ingrammicro.com. Secondly, please su subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Ingram Micro Cybersecurity. Um, and here you'll be able to see all our previous webinars as well as any other cybersecurity related content. Um, of course, get social with us. Follow us on Twitter at I am Cybersecurity for cybersecurity updates and tweet us if you have any cybersecurity related queries. So if you have any questions, even in general, it doesn't have to be regarding this webinar. If you have any cybersecurity queries, please do get on Twitter and um, tag us, follow us, and just send us your query, and we will get back to you at the earliest. Now, um, just going to touch up on the PDR. I know a lot of you have already been aware of this. So we are still offering the two free public discovery reports um, for your end customers. So all you have to do is give us the name of your clients and we will make this uh, report and give it to you. Now, this PDR is a, is a teaser. It's a pre-sales tool that you can use to discuss security with your end customer. Um, it's, it is not intrusive in any manner. It is completely passive and we use only um, publicly available information. So um, this could range from IP addresses to services being used as well as all the email addresses uh, related to that domain. So please, yes, do uh, get, uh, get, get, get back to us and we can give you the, the PDRs. Um, uh, just want to touch up on the security training as well. We can give your team a free foundational training in cybersecurity and this covers the basic do's and don'ts of cybersecurity as well as exciting topics such as phishing and ransomware. So please, if you're interested in setting up a training for your, for your employees, do get in touch with us and we can give it to you. Um, we are also doing the CyberSafe training on the 25th of January, and uh, this will allow you to earn the CyberSafe credential. So please do book a training with us. You can even do it on the website or send us an email, uh, whichever works for you. So please do get back to us on that one and we can set it up for you. Finally, I'm just gonna to talk to you about the enablement session. So we are still enabling our partners as to our services and what Ingram Micro can do to you, do for you um, in, in terms of cybersecurity. Um, so please do get in touch with us and we can set up an enablement session. Uh, we can either do this through WebEx or through at your organization, whichever works best. Now, I'm just gonna hand over the, uh, the, the slides to um, Kian, who's the Partner Relationship Manager at AlienWalt, and he's gonna take it uh, forward from there. So Kian, if you could just take over the control. Hi Vic, just doing this right now. And please uh, share your screen as well. Yeah, so just give me a moment. So Vic, I just need you to stop sharing your screen and then I can share mine. 
Sure, Kian, I'm doing that right now. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, I think that is working. Please let us know in the chat if you guys cannot see my screen. But I think, I think it's working now okay. So firstly, thank you very, very much to Vikram and the Ingram Micro team for inviting us here um, this afternoon um, to give you guys a lowdown on how to detect ransomware using the Alien Vault uh, Unified Security Management Platform. As, as Vic mentioned, my name is Kean Harrington. I'm the Partner Relationship Manager for the rest of EMEA here at, um, at Alien Vault. While I'm also joined in the room by my colleague Ayub, who is the, is the account manager for the Middle East. We'll later be joined by our colleague Aziz, who's our senior solutions um, architect, who is uh, situated in the Middle East, and Aziz will be doing a demonstration for you guys um, later on on the webinar. Okay, fantastic. So, in this webcast, what we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss what and why of ransomware. We're going to discuss how ransomware infiltrates networks and then spreads across infrastructures. We're going to discuss what security controls are needed to detect ransomware. And then we're going to see where Alien Vault comes in and the advantages that Alien Vault and the USM platform can provide your customers in helping to detect and remediate ransomware. Aziz will step in then and do a live demonstration of the product and hopefully um, we'll be after answering all of your questions but just in case there's any lingering thoughts um, we for sure will answer anything that you may have. Okay, fantastic. So, ransomware. Ransomware is the fastest growing security threat out there. It's now estimated to be a two billion dollars market okay um, one in fact one billion dollars was paid in 2016 and this is actually expected to grow to 24 billion dollars by 2020 just to give you a few examples the not petya attacks caused 310 million in damages to Merck and they caused 300 million in damages to FedEx and 200 million to the shipping firm Maersk. That's an awful lot of money for one ransomware attack. So what is ransomware? Ransomware is a specific type of malware that originated in Russia. Okay, 88% of ransomware attacks are, for, are, you, are encrypting or cryptoware. Okay, and what this means is that the ransomware encrypts files and makes them inaccessible to the, end, to the client or to the person in, in, affected. It's an extortion attack, therefore the ransomware holds the victim's data hostage. Um, they may then issue a ransom and ov obviously usually the, the point of call is that if the ransom is not paid, all data will be leaked. CryptoLocker, possibly one of the most famous ransomware attacks, procured an estimated 3 million before it was taken down. Uh, CryptoWall procured an estimated 18 million by June 2015. And the average demand being issued to customers and to clients out there is $1,000 um, per ransomware attack. So what's the impact of ransomware, okay? So not only is there monetary um, concerns and impacts for businesses, right? 41% of ransomware attacks are system down, cause system downtime, okay? Every company out there has deadlines to meet, especially in maybe manufacturing, um, they, they might have deadlines to meet. Um, energies and utilities, if they go down, um, you, could, you could leave with mass, mass chaos. Um, 39% productivity loss, and of course 30% data loss. 
In terms of IT security, 49% um, change of IT security strategy to focus on mitigation. 41% increased spending on IT security after a ransomware attack. And 16% of customers out there loss of confidence in existing cybersecurity solutions. So, as a partner and a provider of IT security solutions, you really don't want to be in that 16%. Um, one fascinating stat that I've seen is that uh, it was one released by the FBI in which they stated that there's now more than 4,000 ransomware infections per hour. Okay, so a number of years ago, the, the latest buzz term was the advanced persistent threat, the APT attacks. Nowadays, ransomware has really stepped in and upgraded and raised the level on attacks and their impact on businesses. So I suppose the key here is that these attacks are not a what, but they're a who. Who is attacking the business? Who is using ransomware? Um, who is trying to exfiltrate data? And the people that are doing this, 69% are organized cyber criminals, okay? 58% opportunistic hackers and 28% are state-sponsored hackers. This is a pretty ominous sign in that what it means is that if 69% if, if of the people who are deploying ransomware are organized cyber criminals, they're going to keep attacking until they find a way in, okay? A lot of ransomware attacks are dropped by spear, spear phishing. We'll discuss that in a bit more detail later on, but I suppose the important point is that it's a person at the other side of the laptop. It's a person who, in 69% of it, or maybe 28% of cases, state-sponsored attackers, are actually being tasked to infiltrate your client's environment and exfiltrate what they need. So they're going to keep doing it until they can find a way to do it. So there's not a day goes by when we don't pick up a newspaper or we don't go on LinkedIn or which, whichever social media site and see that ransomware is in the news. And we've seen some real devastating attacks. On Android, um, they attack uh, Chrysor, which is a derivative of a zero-day iOS exploit called Pegasus. Once installed the malware, um, uh, this malware allows hackers to spy on things. So once this ransomware is deployed, um, attackers can spy on calls, texts, emails, the camera, and even the keys that you type on your device. So it's clearly not a hack you want on your phone. What's key, I suppose, is the type on your device. If the attacker is able to see what you're typing, it's going to be, the attacker is going to be able to see your passwords and is going to be able to log in to in with your credentials through the front door you won't even realize they're doing it because there won't be there won't be anything malicious or there won't be any change in the behavior because they will have your credentials of course a lot of these attacks um, are highlighting recently discovered exploits but many of you will also be familiar with other well-known cases such as the hacking of hillary clinton's server the Myrage Trojan that uses brute force to expand its reach and the compromise of household Internet of Things, devices that such as Wi-Fi cameras, set-top boxes, and more. So what's the an anatomy of ransomware attack? So ransomware traditionally spreads via spam and phishing emails, okay? 82% of successful phishing attacks in 2016 took only minutes until the recipient was successfully compromised, minutes. In terms of data exfiltration, 21% exfiltration, was completed within minutes, while 68% completed in a matter of days. Okay, so just to walk you through the, the anatomy, the first step is the infection, second step, secure key exchange, Third step is the actual encryption of your data, followed by the extortion and the extortion demands. And finally, once the, extort, once, once the ransom is met, um, the unlocking of your data. So 
So once infected, remediation can be extremely, extremely costly, okay? Um, unfortunately, um, malware, unfortunately, malware can be hard to detect. Over 75% of infections can take more than, more than days to discover. 30% of malware is zero day and missed by legacy antivirus, endpoints, and firewalls. Okay, I think this refers back to the point that I was stressing earlier. It's now, it's now a person behind the laptop. They're gonna keep um, writing different code, writing different malware, until they can find a way around antivirus, until they can find a way around endpoints, and until they can find a way around firewalls. So what, what security solutions would you say are the most effective to respond to ransomware? 75% of customers um, suggest data backup and recovery response. 13% threat intelligence, 10% behavioral analytics, and 3% take out cyber insurance. Early detection is key, okay? Um, the last Mandiant report I read suggested that attackers can spend 146 days within an environment without being detected, okay? This is the same for ransomware. If, if, you, if, if you think about it in, in real terms, if I was able to go in and out of a bank for 136 days and take what I wanted without being detected, the bank would be left empty, okay? And this is really, really important, and detection is key, okay? Ransomware can, of course, be hard to detect, but it's not impossible. Examples of indicators of compromise of ransomware include um, communication with an IP or domain with a bad reputation, forcing group policy updates to fail, sending data via covert channel, updating audit policy, disabling firewall or antivirus software, and running unauthorized, unexpected network scans. All of these can indicate that a ransomware attack is in the process of taking place. However, defense is hard and expensive. Ransomware threats are evolving every day. Attackers keep getting smarter. Client infrastructures, um, pardon me, uh, client infrastructures continue to change, leaving gaps for attack attackers to exploit. Many, many clients and customers, businesses out there lack tools. They lack resources, but most importantly, they lack the time to effectively defend against these kinds of attacks. And this is where Alien Vault fits in. Alien Vault was founded with a very, very simple purpose. The purpose of simplifying security operations, and the way that we do that is by consolidating separate point products to be managed from a single platform. So when you purchase Alien Vault, um, you purchase an asset discovery, vulnerability assessment, intrusion detection, behavioral monitoring, and SIEM tool, all in one platform, all in one license. The USM, the Unified Security Management Platform, unifies each of these essential technologies into a single platform, providing your client with the visibility and control that they need from a single management console. Instead of having to deploy and manage each of these separately, you install just one platform and you give yourself the very best chance at detecting ransomware within your environment early. So with Alien Vault, you can monitor, detect, and respond. Using our orchestration tools, you can, you can use our Alien apps. You can see the IT security section there. We're fully integrated with McAfee, Cisco Umbrella, Carbon Black, Palo Alto, and I think we mentioned earlier about some of the different ways in which you can detect ransomware. And one of those ways is a bad IP address. Using our alien apps, if we can detect a bad IP address within your environment, we can send, um, we can orchestrate a response to the Cisco umbrella within your environment 
to immediately block that IP address. Okay. In order to complement the USM platform, we have two strands of threat intelligence. Okay. The very first comes from our Alien Vault Labs team, who are located out in te Texas and are consistently writing correlation directives, um, writing IDS signatures, doing vulnerability audits, asset discovery signatures, IP reputation data, data source plugins and alien apps, and incident response guidance for our customers. What all of this means is that when a customer sees an alert on the Alien Vault USM, our, our, our labs team would be after doing the work for you. Your customer will not have to go deploying what um, they're seeing in a virtualized environment just to see how it behaves. Our team will already be after doing this for you. And what we will be after doing is we'll be after providing you with um, some actionable threat intelligence on what we're seeing in your environment. This means that as soon as you see what's something, something malicious in your environment, you will have all the data around it so that you'll be able to make a response and a very, very quick call to action on it. Okay, so to complement the Alien Vault Labs team, and something that is truly unique to Alien Vault is the Alien Vault Open Threat Exchange. The Open Threat Exchange is the world's first truly open threat intelligence community. We have over 65,000 global participants to investigate emerging threats in the wild. And what these participants do is they update the Open Threat Exchange with what they're seeing out in the wild. Hi right, guys, we have an issue. I don't know if you hear us. Uh, we'll be connected in two minutes. Sorry about that. Okay, guys, apologies about that. Some um, technical difficulty from our side. The call just dropped. But I was just explaining that of the 65,000 participants, um, we have some really, really big strategic partners with the Open Trail Exchange. Um, Carbon Black, FireEye, Palo Alto, all update our Open Trail Exchange with intelligence that they're receiving from their own ecosystems. All of this intelligence is then being transferred to our Alien Vault Labs team who are, up, who are validating the intelligence and sending lists of updates and correlation directives to your customer. And again, giving them the very best chance to understand what they're seeing, to understand what's going on in their environment. You don't need to be a security expert to, look, to, to understand USM. We'll provide you with the expertise through our Open Threat Exchange and through our lab team. Finally, before I pass you to Aziz, threat intelligence minimizes business impact. You can see a number of ransomware attacks that have been, um, have been detected over the last 12 months, um, even going back to the Adobe Zero Day. Um, you can see that the, the Petra um, threat was discovered on June 27th, and we had it detected on the same day. You can see that WannaCry, we had it detected on the same day. Samba ransomware, we had it detected in the same way. Eternal Blue, four days. WordPress content injection, we had it detected. We had the exploit that they used detected six days before the attack took place. And the Adobe Zero Day, three months before the attack took place. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, stop sharing my screen for a moment. My colleague Aziz is on the line. Aziz, are, are, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, Ken. Yes. Hello? 
Fantastic. Uh, so Aziz now is just going to give a demonstration of our products and see how everything I spoke about works. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you all for uh, joining us today. Uh, this is uh, Aziz Al Harbi. I'm a senior security architect here in Alien Folk. And now we're going to do a, a quick overview of the uh, Alien Vault. So uh, uh, we're going to go to uh, activity and alarms. We're going to spend most of our time on this page. Uh, in here, we can see the five uh, kill chain or the five the stages that attacker takes to compromise the system. Attacker usually start from environment awareness, uh, so that reconnaissance, deliver uh, an attack, exploit an installation, and after that, the, the attacker will compromise the system. So we can see here's the circles, and we can see the like if we hover over this circle, we can see the start and end uh, of this tie of, of, of this alarms, and we can see we have malware infection 47, command and control communication 44, and uh, command and, uh, there is another type of command and control communication which is uh, about 10. So if we click on this type of uh, alarm, we can see over here. We can see the alarms. It's a command and control communications, and the priority of the alarms is high, and the status of uh, this alarm is open, source and destination. And this is the sensor we where we got this uh, this alarms from. Like we get it if you have more than one sensor, we can, you can differentiate or you can see how you can find out how from where you got this alarm. So we can see it's from uh, the, our VM sensor. So if we click on this alarm now, we can see the malware family and uh, HTTP host name, uh, the sensor, priority of the alarms, alarm status. And here is, you can see a description of the alarms. And also there is a recommendation on, uh, in how to uh, mitigate or how to stop this alarms. So, if we uh, hover over here, we can see, we can go to, to the metadata and uh, look into the, or we can see the log uh, file or the logs. So we can see here's the access control, it's allow the plugin, where we got this uh, logs from, Alien Fault and IDS, one of the features that uh, Alien Fault provides. The sensors, VM, the VMware, and here is the request agent. And if we go down here, we can also see a lot more information about this type of alarms. And here we can see the raw logs. And if we want to see the hex, we can click on the hex and we can see the hex from here. So also we can see here is the format of the the logs, and also we can see the raw logs. So here's how we like we we can see how we uh, or how we can navigate between alarms and go to, to the raw logs. I mean with the simple steps. And also what we can do in here we can select action. I mean when uh, can talk about uh, the integration with the other uh, solutions to like to. Take action like we in here. We can take action from Palo Alto. Like for example, we can uh, send an action to Palo Alto. To say okay, this IP block this IP address, or we can create a ticket. We can uh, also we can also send the IP address to Cisco Umbrella to block also the IP address. And also, if we if the end user is using like for example Carbon Black, what we can do we can also isolate that. Uh, or in the or that endpoint. So uh, and also if we, let's say for example if you want to take action from Palo Alto and we can see uh, tag event uh, destinations or source and uh, just we can run the action and here it's action initiated at Palo Alto networks and tag event uh, destination. So uh, 
And here, I mean, we saw, I mean, how we can investigate or how we can see the alarms and go deep into the alarms and see the raw logs. After that, if we, we are sure that this is a, a real threat, so we can take action from, uh, from the alarm page. So let's go back to alarms and uh, try to investigate and see different type of alarms. Let's see, for example, uh, this type of uh, alarm, it's a malware infection, and it's uh, the priority, it's high, alarm status, uh, open, source, uh, here's the source and destinations. So here you can see the ma malware information, and uh, in here you can see the destination. When we, t when in talk about acid discovery, what alien folds also can do, alien folds can integrate with your DNS and give you the host name because most of the end user or most of the customers uh, like to see names instead of IB addresses. And we in here we can see the name of the of that asset. And if we want to investigate more on, about that asset, we can see the host name, IB address, operating system, uh, asset value, and it, also we can see how many alarms were was generated by this uh, by this asset. We can see we have 313 alarms, and in here we can see how many events. And if there is any vulnerabilities on that asset, we can see it from here. Or what? Or if we have any configuration issues with that asset, we can also find it right here. If we can click and pull asset details, and we can see here's the, the details that we talk about. And here's we can see how many, uh, how many alarms, how many events, if there is any vulnerabilities with that asset, we can see it from here. So let's say, for example, we can see the alarms and click in here and go deep into about that alarms and do more investigation. So let's uh, try to find an asset that has uh, uh, vulnerabilities. Okay. We can here we can search about assets that has event, has alarms, has vulnerabilities, or has configuration issues. Let's click on has vulnerabilities. And uh, let's see this asset. And we in here we can see how many I mean how many vulnerabilities that asset has. So if we click on that vulnerabilities, we can see here the last scene for that vulnerabilities, the vulnerability ID, vulnerability names, uh, the name of the assets, and the severity of that vulnerability. So if we click more about on this vulnerabilities, it's gonna give you more details about that vulnerabilities and give you more uh, information on how to mitigate or how to batch that system. So, uh, let's go back here. Or we can select action. We can do another scan if we want, if let's say that we, we batch that system and we want to run the scan again and see if that vulnerability still exists. We can select uh, action and do a, another vulnerability scan on that asset. So uh, we go back to alarm page. And here you can see, I mean, in alarm page, you can see the different type of attack. If there is any, let's say, put force authentication, you can click on put force authentication and we can see the type of uh, the name of the alarms, source destinations, and the, the and the sensors that why it was detected uh, this uh, alarms. We click more, and here we can see how many events were genera generated to or were generated to trigger this alarm. So we can see we have about five or six. So let's say we want to see what's the username with that was entered on this 
login failure. So we can see it from here, the user ID and the username that was entered. So uh, go back. And also with the dashboard, you can customize it if you want like uh, to see the uh, what happened in the last seven days, 30 days, 90 days, or you can custom arrange for the dashboard uh, of this page. So uh, yeah, and, and also we, as you can see, I mean, you can view all the assets in your environment. And you can see the total number of assets in here, uh, uh, how many, the, the asset name, ID address, sensor, and also you can create actually you can create advanced scan and you enter the a range of the IB addresses so alien fault will start scanning for all the assets in the environment so I think we covered most of uh, the alarms page so uh, I will uh, Ken are you here Yeah. Uh, Saziz, are you done? Yes. Perfect. So I think he and, uh, I think we can go back to your slides. Okay, sure. Uh, just one thing. I mean, uh, I think we have. Uh, yeah, Saziz, we have a question um, from uh, Mr. Muhammad. He's saying uh, he's a bit confused if the solution is integrated to the. Microsoft ADA, could you please ad, uh, advise? ADA, okay, we, we, let's, uh, the, 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 there is two things in Alien Vault. What we provide, we have USM Anywhere and USM Applied. With the USM Anywhere, we, we, we are talking about cloud. If the customer has most of the his, his, uh, environment is in the cloud, like he's using Office 365 uh, and different type of uh, cloud services, so the, the best solution will be USM Anywhere. And also we have USM Appliance. So USM Appliance, that means, I mean, we can install the appliance on the customer side. So no logs will leave the customer environment. So we are talking about, this is the USM Appliance, and here is the USM Anywhere. Yes, Aliafold can integrate with the Microsoft uh, ADA. Another question? Uh, we've also dropped a link into the chat for anybody who'd like to see um, the, the integration with the, the Microsoft ATA. Um, in the appliance version, it's done with a plugin, just as um, Aziz just mentioned, and it's also very, very well um, documented there. Quick question for, for you, Aziz. Uh, Mohammed just dropped a message. He said that. Uh, are we working with financial sector? Yes, Mohammed, we're working with financial sector. And uh, as is a question for you, um, and re the regulation in Saudi market for the cloud, uh, uh, Mohammed asked if the appliance will solve it. Um, he would appreciate if you share more information about the regulation for the cloud uh, for Saudi Arabia. Uh, yes, regarding uh, the cloud, uh, like some, most of the government orga organization, uh, I mean, they don't uh, send any logs out of their environment. So everything is going to be on a promise. So, yes, we recommend in that situation the customer to use USM appliance. So, with the USM appliance, nothing and can leave, uh, no logs will leave the environment. And mo all the information or all the features that in USM anywhere can be found in the USM. Uh, I hope you got your answer, Mohammed. Perfect, great. Thanks very much, Abdelaziz. Any other question, uh, guys? No. Oh. So, Aziz, um, 
what is um, what will be the basic requirement? Um, so let me just check the question. Uh, to install the product, uh, this. what is the, the, the basic requirement to install uh, the product? Yes, uh, the thing is uh, just, uh, I think I have it right here. Just uh, let me share my screen here. Uh, hold on a second. To answer these questions, we need to. Okay, now, there, there are three main components in Alien 4. There is a USM sensor, USM server, and USM logger. And, uh, when, what that means with the USM sensors, uh, the, the USM sensor will collect the logs, do the normalization, ideas, vulnerability assessment, to flow, acid discovery, and after that, send the log to the USM server. The USM server will be the management, so the end user will interact with the USM server. And uh, the USM server will do the correlations and different and uh, the management query and uh, and control all other uh, USM uh, appliances. And USM logger will be for uh, uh, for forensics or for, and for the long time storage. What we have also we have USM all in one. What we mean by that, where the sensor and server and logger will be in one appliance. So. No need for separate sensor, separate server, separate logger. Uh, the, the basic depends on the customer uh, requirement or the, the, the customer environment. So sometimes because all-in-one can support up to 1,000 ABS, if the customer has more, more, more than 1,000 ABS, so we will go with the separate sensor, separate server, separate logger. Uh, the basic uh, requirement for USM all-in-one uh, if we want to go with the virtual appliance, it's going to be 16 RAM and uh, uh, about 1 TB for hard disk and uh, 8 core. That answers the question. Uh, Aziz, uh, there's another question uh, from Mr. Suraj. He says, does it only work with Windows? The agent? No, well, what happened is the, if the end user uh, like has uh, Endpoint, or he wants to monitor what, uh, or he wants to install uh, host intrusion detection. So what we we support in Alien for Linux and Windows. So doesn't matter which about the operating system. All right, uh, thank you, Aziz. Again, to all our attendees, please, if you have any questions, there's the chat box, and you can drop all your questions there. And we have Aziz, we have the team in Ireland, and they're more than happy to assist you. All right, so we have one more comment from Adil. Uh, Aziz, can you share the document for basic installation? Uh, he has installed the VM in his lab environment and um, he wants the document to configure uh, the IP addresses and making the policies. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just go to the front of the So uh, most of the, uh, if anyone wants to know about how to configure Alien Vault, uh, he just can go to www.alienvault.com slash documentation. So in the website, there is a lot of, of uh, documents about how to configure Alien Vault, whether it's USM appliance or USM anywhere. So I'm going to share the link now. Yeah, Aziz, if you could just drop it in the... Um, yeah, yeah per, uh, actually, no, you need to send it. Uh, I'll, I'll do it, no problem. Perfect. So if, if you can check uh, the chat box, I've sent the link for the documentation, guys. So that's fine. So also we have some more questions. As he's, he, uh, Mr. Suraj would also like to know if it has support for mobile OS. Yes, we, we support that. I mean, uh, my, I'm, uh, I think there is uh, also one asset uh, we saw it's uh, using the I mean, with asset discovery, Alien Fault will fill you the operating system. Is it uh, Apple or whatever? All right, it's perfect. It's a PC. 
Sounds good. Um, Aziz, we have more questions. As of now, uh, so this is from Mr. Vijay. His understanding of Alien Vault is it will provide us the logs and report r related to the ransomware attacks. And after getting these logs, how can we protect or prevent being attacked? Well, uh, yes, uh, th that's uh, the thing. I mean, after we, we like, with Alien Vault, Alien Vault is going to give you visibility over your network. It's going to tell you if there is anyone who's trying to exploit vulnerabilities or who's trying to put force attack one of the assets in your environment. So what Alien, uh, I mean, what the end user can do, it depends on the, uh, the type of alarms. Let's say uh, a user trying to exploit uh, vulnerabilities. What you can do, you can block that IP address. If there is, uh, I mean, someone is trying to uh, brute force attack uh, uh, one of the the administration, uh, the administrator password in one of the server. So what you can do, you can block also that IP address. Uh, if there is a suspicious behavior from one user, what you can do, you can uh, law, uh, you can disable that user. So it depends on type of the alarms. All right. Uh, so Aziz, more questions. What all other tools are uh, which are supported by Alien Vault? This is by Adil. So what are the tools that are su supported by Alien Vault? So with Alien Vault, I mean, now will uh, Alien Vault can integrate with any security device that customer has. Let's say, for example, uh, let's say, uh, take a like uh, simple example. Uh, let's say we have an Active Directory, we have a switch, we have a firewall. So what we can do, we can install agent on the Active Directory to monitor what is going on inside that asset. After that, if the traffic leaves that asset, uh, we can do span port from the switch. If the traffic leaves that switch, you know, go to the firewall. We can do this. Uh, we can send the syslog from the firewall to alien port. So in this situation, we're going to have a full visibility about the network. So alien port yes, can integrate with any security device, and also even like if the end user has like a, a device that alien port doesn't support, he just can send us a request, and we can create. Like within the standard a week and also if the customer can create his or uh, his own plugin like uh, like some of our user I mean they are using open source tools so what we have in alien fault we have a plugin builder the plugin builder will create a plugin for a specific uh, data source so and after that you can enable it for that data source. so yeah, I mean, we can integrate with any security device. All right, so we have some more questions. Um, uh, so firstly, does it only provide detection or also removal? Yes, we saw uh, in, uh, in our demo uh, how we can take action, how we can block IP address, how we can isolate uh, like endpoint. It's, yes, uh, well, we can take action. All right, perfect. And we have a question from Mr. Khalid. What about ICS integrations and capabilities? Yes, I mean, yeah, well, we can uh, integrate with uh, uh, Cisco uh, ACS. Yes. Uh, all right, and uh, we have another. Yes, we, yeah, we, we have integration, full integration with uh, Cisco ACS. So, and suppose if there is a ransomware already in a Windows server or client PC, and AlienWall gets in, installed after that, can AlienWall remove the ransomware or virus? No, actually, no. The situation, I mean, you, you can like send action to, to block process or to stop some process on that uh, Windows server, but uh, no, I mean, you, you cannot just install the agent and the agent will remove the... Yeah. All right, fine. Thank you, Aziz. Um, I, I'd just like to jump in there, Vic, if that's okay. But what Alien Vault will do, it will give, it will give your client the very best um, opportunity to see the ransomware, right? Um, I think one of the biggest problems that a lot of people are having with security at the moment is that they don't realize that 
the, the, these kind of infections, this kind of malware is actually existing on their infrastructure for, for days on it, for days and days. Um, as I mentioned, Mandy in, in their M Trends report last year suggested that attackers can spend 146 days within an environment before being detected, right? So what Alien Vault does is it watches everything that's going on in your in your environment and it will tell you and it will give you the very best chance of detecting what's going on in your environment, okay? Um, I see the question, um, so we require an antivirus anyway? Yes, you do. You do require an antivirus, you do require a firewall, you do require um, IPS, you do require endpoint protection. All of these tools are still essential in minimizing the risk of attack. The difference is that with Alien Vault sitting behind all of those tools, if something gets behind them or gets around them, we'll give your customer the best opportunity possible to detect it. Nice. We nice. mentioned earlier, it's it's not it's not it's not a it's not a it's not a what nice. anymore, it's a who. So it's a person. And they're gonna keep attacking your customers' infrastructure until they can get around all of the IDS, all of the antivirus. And we sit behind that and we look and we detect. Alien Vault is about detection. Um, I think at this stage it's very plausible to say that prevention tools, while essential, they do not provide 100% um, protection. They just don't. The biggest, the, bit, the biggest example I have for you is the JP Morgan Chase attack. JP Morgan got attacked a number of years ago, and they got attacked despite having spent over $250 million on the latest up-to-date next-generation firewalls antivirus and malware. This means that attackers are still getting around these tools no matter how much you spend on it. And what Alien Vault does is it sits behind those tools, watches everything that's going on, and when we understand that something is happening, we will let you know. With the Alien Vault USM Anywhere, we'll be able to send directives using our alien apps to examples, Palo Alto firewalls to um, Cisco umbrellas to block stuff. All right, thanks, Kian. Um, Aziz, Kian, we'll be connected in one minute. Sorry again, we have an issue with the line, so we'll be connected in one minute. No problem, Ayub. In the meanwhile, uh, Aziz, does Alien Vault uh, integrate with Cisco ASA? Yes, we, we integrate with Cisco ASA. Uh, we have a full integration with Cisco. Perfect. And, uh, uh, and we have a comment from Vijay, uh, Aziz. The link that we shared, does it have a list of the supported vendors or products? Uh, let me see. Uh, let me send uh, another link. I be, it's there, but I mean, it, the, user, uh, the end users need to search for that. Uh, 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 Google account. Yes, there. Okay. Uh, okay. Here is the link for the supported. Uh, no, I send it to. I send it to all. Okay. Here is the link, guys. For the list of the. Supported uh, integration that Alien Fold can support uh, with the integration. All right, so Aziz, we'll take one more question before we stop. Um, uh, Alien Fold is coming as a SIEM and log management of all the features you have explained uh, for detection and prevention, right? This is the question. Yes. All right, perfect. So 
And um, so because, yeah. sorry, yes. to, 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 so just before to, to, to finish, we're going to wrap up. So anyone has another question just to finish? Because what we wanted to do is just take two minutes and take a look at our website um, and show you guys if you need more details, some uh, white paper or case studies. We have a, a really um, good website for that. So uh, we wanted to take a few minutes with Kian to show you how to get information on our website and also um, how to get uh, the partner portal. So it's going to take two minutes, guys. Yeah, guys, look. So when you join the Alien Vault website, click up here to partners, visit the partner portal. Um, it goes straight in because I'm automatically logged in, but if you can um, register your details, you will find absolutely everything you need about Alien Vault here, okay? Um, it's very well organized. The search bar is also extremely handy. Um, if you need any help finding anything, please reach out to Abe or myself or indeed Vic and Aziz as well. Okay, so um, t t thank, you. thank you very much for your time today. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, Vikram, thank you very much for hosting the call and I'd like to pass it back to you for the final words. All right, perfect. Thank you, Kian, for your time. Thank you, Ayub, and thank you, Aziz, for the wonderful demo and answering all the questions that our attendees had. Um, guys, I understand that there are a few more questions, and I will definitely get back to you offline in the form of an email. So do not worry. We will answer everything. And I will also be sharing the contacts of all the guys at Alienwald, as well as myself. If you have any queries, if you have any questions, or if you just want to talk, just drop us an email and we'll definitely get back to you and we can continue this discussion offline. All right. We really thank you for the wonderful um, interactive session that we just had. And uh, really, we, we appreciate you being here in the last quarter. We understand that it's a very um, a busy time. And uh, thank you for being here. And of course, like I said, I will be dropping an email with the link of this recording so you can share it with your teams. And again, if you have any other further questions, you can email us and I will be sharing the contacts. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. Thank you, Thank you for everyone. joining. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Thank you.